as Fibber. And Kathy Lewis as Mom. If I had to tell someone the most important thing about a Medicare supplement, it's to think about what's important to you and what are you looking for in your coverage. Whether that's having a plan that covers absolutely everything or something less expensive with more out-of-pocket expenses. Know what's important to you so you can tell your agent and they can find the plan that's best for you. Delicious. But isn't it kind of a big cake for only four people? Not when one of them is McGee. Oh. <laughs> All right, come with the salad. Well, I finished. I'll put it in the refrigerator. You know, this is a terrific idea of yours, Molly. Well, oh, gee, we couldn't let this day go by without having some sort of a celebration, huh? You know, five years of neighbors. It doesn't seem possible. Now for the inscription. I think I'll write, Love thy neighbor. Hi, honey. Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi. Boy, have I got good news for you. The yes. greatest thing just happened. Really? Yes, sir. You know that empty office we have in our building downtown? Yeah. I finally rented it. Oh. Yes, sir, and I owe it all to your husband. Did Roy find the tenant uh -huh. for you? Ed Waller's nephew, Norman, just got out of law school. Roy sends him over. He looks at it and he liked it. Oh, that's wonderful, honey. Yeah. Man. There. How does that look? Love thy neighbor? Is that all you're going to put on it? Yeah. Well, I was planning a much bigger message. Well, I'll run right out and get you a blank cake. Don't bother, my dear. This will be fine. We'll just scrape that off. Now, here's what I'd like to say. Take an inscription. Yes, sir. This happy occasion commemorates the fifth anniversary of the McGee's and Norris's as good and friendly neighbors. Uh-huh. May our friendship continue as the years progress, and may we always live side by side in peace and perfect harmony. Got that? Uh-huh. Read it back. Love thy neighbor. <laughs> I think it says the same thing. Okay, then I'll work it into my after-dinner speech. We're going to have a midnight supper if you don't start the barbecue. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get right after that now, and I'm going to baste those steaks in my own special sauce. Oh, what kind is that? It's an old Creole recipe. Red pepper, black pepper, chili pepper, Tabasco sauce, and Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> wow. Never mind the fire. Those steaks will cook themselves. Well, you taste them. <laughs> Want me to get that charcoal started for you, McGee? Oh, hi, Roy. Are you kidding? You're talking to an old boy scout. <laughs> the barbecue of all time. Oh. <laughs> hey, that's a beauty, huh? Hey, McGee, I want to show you something. Okay. Hey, the girls are going all out on a celebration tonight, aren't they? Oh, huh? yeah, I think it's nice to celebrate something like this. So do I. You know, it isn't every day you get to live next door to a guy for five years. Five years. Boy, we've had a lot of laughs, haven't we, McGee? Uh, great times, Roy. <laughs> great times. Hey, what do you think of this, huh? <laughs> what is it? Well, it's a fruit picker. Hey, watch this. <laughs> Pretty nifty, huh? Hey, that's great, Roy. I thought you'd like it. It'll come in real handy, won't it? I'll say. Oh, but, but, uh, uh, but, but I, uh, Roy, look, you wait right here. I'll be back in just a second. No, I'm afraid you're out. But that's okay. I've got a big bottle of dressing at home. Honey, I'm in a terrific spot. What's the matter? <laughs> Crazy Roy Norris bought me a gift. Oh, that's cute. But, but I don't have anything to give him. Well, honey, I'm sure Roy doesn't expect a gift in return. Yeah, but it just won't look right unless I give him something. He'll think I forgot our anniversary. It happens to me every year. <laughs> there must be something I can give Roy. Some, some gift I haven't used. The green sweater with the yellow collar. I gave you that for Christmas. And I wouldn't part with it for anything in the world. <laughs> I know. I'll give him the trout reel I bought last week. Your brand new one? Well, I'll buy myself another one. This has to be something extra special. After all, he gave me a terrific fruit picker. Oh, it sure beats climbing up on that stepladder. It sure does. <laughs> Roy, old pal, this is for you. For me? That's right. I hope you like it. Well, I, I do. I, I've been wanting one of these. Oh, it's a little embarrassing, though. 
What do you mean? Well, you, you went out and bought me this swell trout reel, and well, I, di I didn't get a thing for you. What do you call that? A fruit picker. I know it's a fruit picker. Listen, that fruit picker may not be as expensive as that trout reel, but that's a very nice gift. Oh, McGee, you, you don't think that I... I don't, I don't think what? I guess that is what you think. Who? Oh, you did buy that for me. Well, no, I didn't, but... Well, if you want to take it. If I want to take it? Well, that's a fine way to offer a gift. It isn't a gift. When did I say anything about it being a gift? Well, you certainly led me to believe that it was a gift. That's why I gave you my brand new trout reel. Well, here, you can have it back. Who wants it back? not an Indian giver. Meaning I am? I did not say that you were. I merely said that I am not. Well, it's the same thing. Look, I don't want your trout reel. I'm sorry about the whole misunderstanding. Well, you certainly led me to believe, after all, it's my apple tree. Since this is my apple tree, I naturally assumed that the apple picker was for me. What do you mean, your tree? Well, it's only natural to assume that... Uh, what do you mean, what do I mean, my tree? Well, according to the survey, the tree is on my property. Survey? What survey? I had my lot surveyed last summer. But there's a boundary stake right over there, and the property line no, runs no, right... No, 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 never mind that. Why did you feel it was necessary to have your property surveyed? Well, McGee, when you're going to put up a wall, it's always smart to know where the property line is. A wall? What wall? <laughs> Hazel and I may put in a pool this summer, and naturally we'd need a wall. Why? Well, well what are you trying to hide? I've seen those knobby stilts you call legs. <laughs> McGee, when you have a pool, you want privacy. You don't want the whole neighborhood looking into your backyard. <laughs> Norris, are you calling me a peeping Tom? <laughs> oh, of course not, McGee. Look, this is nothing against you as a... What am I apologizing for? If I want to build a wall on my property, I don't need your permission. <laughs> You know what I think. Do you know what I really think? What? I don't think there's going to be any swimming pool. I think this whole thing is just a scheme to steal my apple tree. I'm not trying to steal anything. Besides, it isn't your apple tree. But you can see for yourself, it's at least a, a, a foot on my side of the line. Yeah, yeah, well... Well, what about that branch? That branch is hanging over onto my property. So? So that branch belongs to me. And you can take your cotton picking apple picker off of my apples. Because that's my branch. Okay, it's your branch. Here. Find anything? Mr. McGee, would you mind backing up a little, please? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. It's very distracting to have somebody breathing right in your ear. How are we doing? My survey is quite a bit different from the one Mr. Norris had made. Then the apple tree is on my property. No, no, no. The apple tree is on his property. According to my map, you have a pie-shaped lot. I, I laid a line here to show you the angle. Oh. What's this? His clothes pole is on my property? <laughs> uh, okay, Charlie, just a minute. Excuse me a minute, Mr. McGee. Certainly. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, McGee. Uh, Hazel? This doesn't feel bad for a... Cheap reel. <laughs> well, uh, forget the trout reel, because we have rather an interesting problem here. Oh, what sort of a problem? Your man overlooked one small detail. Uh, you have my apple tree, but I have your clothes pole. What? Yes, <laughs> 18 inches over. If you don't mind, keep your laundry in your own backyard. <laughs> 
What are you doing, McGee? I'm delivering your laundry. Uh, Mr. McGee, can I talk to you a minute? Yes, sir. What am I supposed to do with all this wash? Why don't you hang it on your apple tree? <laughs> now, uh, may I help you, sir? Find something else? Yes, as a matter of fact, we did. <laughs> well, what's the good news this time? Well, I wouldn't exactly say it was good news. We, we found that your uh, garage extends over the line a foot and a half. What does that mean? Well, it means that your neighbor could force you to move your garage off his land. I don't suppose I could force him to move his land out from under my garage. <laughs> now, your best bet would be to try to buy the strip of land from him. It wouldn't cost over $100, and it would be a lot cheaper than moving the garage. That can be real expensive. You can, huh? That's no problem when neighbors are friendly. Are you and Mr. Norris on good terms? He's the best friend I ever had. <laughs> I'm going to go over right now and tell him so. <laughs> Let's put that right back on my property where it belongs. Don't do me any favors, McGee. Now, we've had our little joke. We've had a good laugh over this, Roy. A joke? You don't think I was serious, do you? You know how I love to fool around. Well, I certainly don't think these dirty clothes are very funny. I agree with you. I don't think they are the least bit funny. Hazel spent all morning on them, and now she's got to do the whole laundry over again. No, she doesn't. I'll do the laundry. You? Yes, sir. And I'll wash your car, and if I have time, I'll cut your grass. McGee, you're up to something. No. All I want to do is to apologize for yesterday. It was my fault. Then you admit it. I certainly do. Now, let's shake and forget the whole thing. Well, it was pretty ridiculous. Yeah. We acted like a couple of crazy kids. One of us acted like a crazy kid. No. I acted like one, too. McGee, <laughs> we're all through now. I'll send the bill with my report. Uh, thank you, Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Oh, did you get the matter of the garage straightened out? Uh, yes, that's all straightened out. Did he get what matter of the garage straightened out? Well, uh, 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 Mr. Johnson felt that I should straighten out my garage because it's such a mess. You see, I, uh, I can barely get my car in there. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, Mr. Johnson, is there some problem with McGee's garage? No, no, no problem, as long as you and Mr. McGee are such good friends. Roy and I are the best friends in the whole world, are we, old man? I get the strange feeling you're after something. Me? No. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make you some money. How? Because you and I are such good old pals, I'm going to give you uh, $50 for that little teensy bit of your property that my garage is on. Uh, ah. <laughs> So that's it. <laughs> yeah, I knew there was some reason for that buddy-buddy stuff. McGee, you are an underhanded, conniving, hypocritical four-flusher. Go ahead, Roy. You can call me anything you want, just as long as we're still friends. <laughs> McGee, you're in a terrible spot. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're in a real jam. <laughs> I sure am. Yeah, I've got you right over a great big barrel. I'm going to give you $60. What? Sell that valuable piece of property for $60? What's so valuable about it? Well, there's a very expensive garage on it. No, McGee, I, I, uh, I wouldn't take less than uh, $3,500. $3,500? Take it or move it, McGee. No, no, you can't do this to me, Norris. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> well, I've got to get to my office. Wait a minute. Just a second. Don't forget your laundry. <laughs> Molly. Come on in. We, uh, we were just talking about you. Yes, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, look, Molly, I'm sorry about everything, but, well, you know the reason. Sure. I've been married to it for 15 years. <laughs> and it doesn't want you coming over trying to get around its wife. This isn't a social call, McGee. I just came over to find out when you plan to move your garage. I'm not planning on doing anything until I hear from my lawyer. Lawyer? Well, that isn't going to do you any good. You haven't got a legal leg to stand on. Never mind what kind of legs I've got. Norman Waller will think of something. He's a very bright young attorney. Well, I've been an attorney for a few more years than Norman Waller. You say you're an attorney. But personally, I don't trust a man who keeps his law degree in a frame with frosted glass. It's not frosted glass. The cleaning woman just never dusts it. And that's another thing. I don't like a dirty lawyer. Mrs. McGee? Yes. I'm Norman Waller. 
Oh, hello, Norman. Won't you come in? Hey, Norman, you must have come up with a pretty quick answer. <laughs> yes, I did. Actually, the solution is very simple, Mr. McGee. Atta boy. Uh, you know uh, Mr. Norris, the villain of the piece? <laughs> the word is plaintiff, McGee. <laughs> hello, Mr. Norris. Hello, Norman. So, the solution is very simple. Huh? Oh, quite. <laughs> And I didn't have a legal leg to stand on, huh? <laughs> Norman, tell him exactly what I'm going to do. Mr. McGee is going to move his garage. And if you want to fight it... <laughs> I'm going to move my gar... What kind of a solution is that? <laughs> McGee, you're right. He is a very bright young attorney. I'm sorry, Mr. McGee. I've studied this from every aspect. I even went to the Hall of Records and checked the original deeds. Well, didn't you come up with any angle at all? Nothing of any value. There was one thing, but it was very small. What is it, Norman? Mr. McGee is very good at making a mountain out of a molehill. Well, it dates back to 1903, when this section was all farmland. It gives Mr. McGee grazing rights on the Norris property. <laughs> grazing rights? Well, McGee, you're welcome to come over and nibble on my grass any time. <laughs> Honey, don't you think you ought to accompany Roy to the door and beg his forgiveness, huh? I'm not very good at crawling, honey. How good are you at moving garages? You've got 30 days, McGee. Norman, I was depending on you. I did everything I could. I'm sure you did, Norman. Interesting about the grazing rights, though. <laughs> oh, yeah. They come in mighty handy if you happen to be a horse. <laughs> Actually, they were quite valuable some time ago. Well, we could always put horns on the garage and claim it's a cow. <laughs> I think I got an idea. Oh, boy. No, this is a good one, honey. Those are the worst kind. <laughs> Norman, I think those grazing rights of yours are going to come in mighty handy. <laughs> hmm. Roy, I feel it's only fair to warn you that if you insist on my moving that garage, I'm going to use my grazing rights. Well, go right ahead, McGee. Well, you can eat my grass till you're green in the face. <laughs> but the garage goes. <laughs> oh, green in the... Oh, that's good. Oh, I bet you keep those juries in stitches. <laughs> Suit yourself. Oh, there you are, Mr. Davis. Come right in here, sir. You, Mr. Maggie? Uh, McGee. And uh, this is Mr. Norris, our host. Hiya, Mr. Norris. That's right neighborly of you. <laughs> it's, uh, it's no problem at all. Just make sure they stay on that side. Oh, don't you worry. Okay, Willie. Run them on down. <laughs> Holy Hatfield. <laughs> Easy, Norris. Come on, get Here we are, girls. Get over there. Get him out! Move along! Get him out! Before I call the police! What can the police do? I have grazing rights on your property. But you, you've gone too far this time. You've gone way too far. Get over there and eat and enjoy yourself. We're not going to be here all day. Hey, you, you go get away from my apples. <laughs> Stay out of that bird! <laughs> sure. They've eaten my shirt. McGee, get those goats out of here or I'll... I hope it wasn't starched. Starch always makes the goats kind of stiff-legged. <laughs> I gotta make a phone call. I'll be right back, Norris. McGee, don't miss the fun. Maybe they're thirsty. Shoot. Uh, Norm, listen, Norm, I don't think we're gonna have any trouble with Norris. No, no problem with the garage. Well, uh, you know what the grazing rights are? Norm? 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 <laughs> Mr. Maggie, that crazy fool turn on his sprinklers and let my goats loose. They run all over the place. All right, Norris, you've gone too far. Dog gone it. All right, Norris, turn that water on. Dog on it. You get the goats wet and they smell funny. You think they smell good when they're dry? You knock down that barrier. That's trespassing. So me. <laughs> you asked for it. Shoot. Shoot. Hey, I'll get you. McGee, turn that hose off. Shoot. Turn that hose off. Roy, what's going on out 
look here. Honey, I'm sorry. But... <laughs> After you boys have had your little fun, you and I are going to have a little talk. <laughs> it's all McGee's fault, honey. I... Get over there, Nanny. Go on, get over. Oh, I'm sorry, Billy. Oh, this racket. McGee! But, honey, it was all... <laughs> Thanks a lot. Mama was right. <laughs> oh, the other side. Yeah. Sorry. McGee, you asked for it? Sarge. You know, I told you that. Sarge, you got to... Sarge, stop that! <laughs> so he walks up to my apple tree, he reaches up, grabs a branch, and snaps it off. I object, Your Honor. The apple tree he refers to is not his, but mine. I'm not talking about the whole apple tree. I'm only talking about the branches hanging over onto my property. It doesn't matter where the branch is. apple tree it is. Six of my goats is missing. We'll, we'll get to you, Mr. Goats. Davis, Norman, and your Norman, goats. Your Honor, you all sit down. You know the kind of trouble he gets into around the house. Would you please Imagine what could happen to him in a courtroom. <laughs> the whole thing's a pure case of trespassing, Harry. Mr. McGee, you don't address this court as Harry. Your Honor, any trespassing on my part was purely self-defense. Those goats were ruining my yard. Goats? What's this about goats? <laughs> well, uh, Your Honor, I brought in a herd of goats yesterday. Oh, so you're the one that turned those fool animals loose. I didn't turn them loose. He did. And we ain't found all of them yet. Now, just a minute. Who are you? I'm Adam Davis. I got six goats missing. Mm -hmm. Well, three of them were in my backyard. And for your information, uh, they ate up all my rose bushes. <laughs> Roses ain't good for goats. I wish you wouldn't let them do that. Believe me, I asked them not to. You can appreciate what I went through, Your Honor. They ate three of my best shirts. We just hope it teaches them both a lesson. Mm. Uh, Your Honor, I'd like to submit this original title as evidence. It gives Mr. McGee grazing rights on Mr. Norris's property. This can't apply now, Counselor. The zoning restrictions have canceled out all so-called grazing rights. Now, this court orders Mr. McGee to pay Mr. Norris $300 damages. Norman, do something. Well, I don't know what I can do, Mr. McGee. We never studied a case like this in law school. <laughs> Your Honor, I'd like to appeal to the court to be lenient with me on account of the extreme youth of my lawyer. <laughs> my decision stands. Norman, the, the judge is obviously prejudiced because of uh, his rose bushes. Now, now, you could have this decision set aside. I appreciate your advice, Mr. Norris, but I prefer to lose this case on my own, Mary. <laughs> well, I don't prefer to lose it. I'll settle for a draw. You listen to Roy. He knows what he's talking about. McGee, you stay out of this. I object, Your Honor. The witness has a right to speak in his own behalf. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Norris. Whose side are you on? He's on my side. He's my lawyer. I thought I was your lawyer. You can be my lawyer. I'm suing for three goats. McGee's kind of a one-man war. First you fight him, then you join him. Your Honor, my client wishes to address the court. What is it now, McGee? Oh, Mr. McGee is his client. Mr. Davis is mine. I want to know what they're going to do about my goats. Order. Order this court, I say. Now then. Which lawyer belongs to what client and who is suing who? I'm suing both of them. And I was suing Norris. And I was suing McGee, but I'm not suing McGee anymore. And I'm not suing Norris anymore. Well, I'm still suing somebody. I'm sorry to interrupt. But I think there are three goats grazing on the courthouse lawn. Good heavens, get them out of there, Davis, before they eat the flagpole. Yes, sir, right away. And I'm obliged to you for finding them. Now, as far as you two are concerned... Uh, Molly Hazel, please take them home. Harry, you got 20 carrots. <laughs>
court adjourned. Come on, fellas. Roy, I want you to know that I'm... Forget it, McGee. I'm sorry, too. I think it's called for a celebration. Molly, do you still have that cake? Oh, it's probably all dried out. The steaks are still good. And I could bake an apple pie. Apple pie? <laughs> Second thought, I'll make it blueberry. Huh? <laughs> How about a little golf, huh? Davis was played by Olin Howler, Judge Townley by Charles Kane, Norman Waller by Robert Casper, Surveyor by Paul Breyer.